The Abyss is already stacked with info, and depending on the mission designer, you can have a lot of battlefield mission info on it already. Now, there's a few things you can't add directly via the mission editor, and it requires funky editing of lures, or manually, or with third-party software. Or you can do it in the mission itself. I'm going to demonstrate this with a little practical example. It's not necessarily military technique, but it's there to get your creative juices flowing, so you can figure out what helps you on your missions. Now with the Abris, you can do lines. So you're wondering, Folk, why would I want to draw pretty lines and pictures in the Abris? I mean, it's not like I can send this clever dirty pic I just drew via the day link, or have my shark fly that pattern automatically. Well, here's some whys. This mission, there's a convoy I'll need to assist with escorting. It's not my main mission though, so my waypoints have been set elsewhere. This is a congested area, so I don't want to struggle finding their route if I'm tossed away and need to reacquire them later. So I can add lines to plot out their path. From the Abris, Menu, Plan, select Add Info. Now I move the road tree to where I want to start, pushing a road tree to change axis. Now add line. The road tree now places the endpoint of the line. If it's where I want, I push the line again. Now it continues a new line from that spot. I can push color to change color, though for the current line shape will always be in bold and the line I'm currently placing will always be in red. When you're done, press cancel. Now I can start a new string of lines, maybe with a different color. And if I wanted to map out an alternate route for them, or maybe cordon off a forward edge of battle or some other no-go zone, I could do that as well. If I hover over an existing line, it goes bold, showing it's a currently selected one, and instead of creating a new line, I can delete the old one. Scale in closely if you need to create lines near one another so the cursor doesn't touch and force you to edit or delete instead. You don't need to press active for lines and map points like you would for changing flight plan waypoints. Once you exit the planning tool, it's already on the map. Now menu plan can also be used to add map points. So this convoy is transporting an important asset. A vice president of marketing setting up a new food chain. And he knows the competition is violently fierce and refuses to have radios possibly leak his competition. So while I'm not getting calls on where they are on this route, I do know their planned speed and when they should reach where. So in the mission editor, given that they're using a sustainable speed, I can see their ETA at every waypoint. So, I'm a cool mission designer and I'll add initial points next to each of these waypoints with a timestamp they're planning to arrive there. Now, if you've seen my Demystifying the Abris video, you'll know that initial points also become reference points on the Abris. In the mission now, the Abris will show these as reference points. Crosses, which are the same type of map point the Abris replicates mission editor target points in your Abris. Unlike lines, you can info on a map point, you'll see the name of the map and you can search for it so you can use your directory to find it quickly. Either it has to be in the 17 closest ones or you can just use names to search for it, as shown in my previous video on Abris search info on ERBL. Now reference points, landmarks and obstacles can be searched for under waypoints. Of course, you can't steer to it or slew the shawl directly to it. It's just visual info to get you where you need to go ASAP. You can also, in mission, place such map points via menu, plan, add info, add point. I'll choose directly and just add a note here about the intersection near the bridge which can get congested with traffic. If I went to add info and move the cursor over it, instead of being able to add a point 
or line and still be able to edit or delete that point. Now in the mission, if I needed to find the convoy, I would go to search, waypoint, rotary over to Z, which is what I started the timestamps with, just to be unique, and rotary over to the one just ahead of my current time, to upright. Now I'll press info to see the bearing here. Now I can get the schwal there, laser lock my range to put the gate on the reference point, and now I can follow the road as per the map line. Checking my shawl is still in the line to find the convoy. I would advise you don't try and be sassy and add things like a reference point that says TRG02 because it will confuse you into making it think that it's a preloaded target point. So there are some naming conventions that you might want to avoid. If I was someone a scouting only mission and I preferred target points, I could make target points on the PV800 and then manually go and recreate them as ref points, but it's not really that useful. Now there's some cool other map points that I can add. It's that season in the Caucasus, so fog can roll in at any moment, and I might need to be low altitude. I know there's a massive TV tower here, which I'd rather not get up and close and personal with, in the romantic fog. So I'll add another point and this time change it to obstacle with its long triangle. I can set the height of the obstacle as well in case I needed to hop over it. Now, there'll also be some tomcats zipping over thirsty for updates near I knew that's been drifting, so that needs recalibrating. Since this bridge should be quite visible to him, I'll mark it as a landmark, which is a short triangle, and give it a name so I can find it later for them. During the mission, they'll also be setting up a forward arming and refueling point here. So I'll add an airport waypoint, and I'm going to add the times it'll be operational on my map. And because this whole op is for El Vice Presidente, they're being nice and setting up VHF omnidirectional range station here as well. They're even putting up a non-directional beacon to help guide my uncoordinated descent in there. Since they're placing it exactly one click away from the FOB, I'm going to use relative when placing this point. It doesn't really matter where I place my cursor to add the new point as long as it's not trying to edit something else, as I can now use this option at the bottom to specify that it's from the FOB, it's directly south by one kilometer. And you can use relative for other map points as well, except reference points. If you wanted to use this kind of indirect relative method, you'd have to set it first as a VA, you know, VR station and then afterwards edit that point to be a reference point instead. When your Abris boots up, which takes about 1 minute 20 seconds usually, you'll see info on what's been loaded. Note, unless someone's done interesting things with lures beyond the in-game mission designed, the starting info is less useful. Company routes uh, will always pretty much be one, which is the flight plan you entered the mission with, even if it's only the single waypoint of your starting position. And it's always retrievable by revise. Routes is the number of flight plans you've saved, regardless of if it's the same flight plan over and over and how much detail it has. Additional info is the number of line objects that you have added, plus the number of tactical threat circles which were marked at your spawn. I don't think you can affect or create these other data types. Check out my video on demystifying the mission editors, see how you can add reference points, target points, and INU fix points. I don't think you can replicate those dots from the INU fix points, though without creating waypoints in the flight plan. So like tactical threats, they're from the mission editor only. I hope this has given you some ideas of what you can do to make the Abris really help you to find your way quickly in combat, as well as assisting other aircraft with information they might need. This is Folk. Join me in the next episode for Abris and Daylink tips.